Hey everyone, what's up? Hey, it's Phil Gervishak. Today we get to talk to Michael Katz. Michael is the author of The Likeable Expert. Fun little book, 121 insights to start your day and grow your business. I got my copy yesterday and Michael sent me a PDF ahead of time. So I've already dived in and enjoyed the book. It's awesome. But I want to talk to Michael today about how the heck he came up with this idea and how you be more likable. So how's things today, Michael? Very good. Very good. 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 So so tell us a little bit about your background here and why, why how you kind of got started being known as a likable expert. Yeah. Um, well, I, uh, I had a job until 2000, and I actually never expected to work for myself at all. I don't have any entrepreneurial anything in my family. Uh, very, uh, I have two older brothers. One's a college professor, tenured. The other's a partner in a law firm. We are very uh, play it safe people. But uh, this is the late 90s, and um, the internet was really happening back then as a you know huge thing. Sort of forget what an impact it was having. And back then, people with jobs felt like they were kind of missing out. And so my interest in the internet, the feeling that uh, I was good in my job to not get fired. I worked for a big cable company. But I kind of got to the point where, you know, this is it. I pretty much peaked in here. And between that feeling like I just wasn't firing on all cylinders. And then the sort of lure of the internet, I left. And I immediately ran into a problem, which is what I was going to do at the time was build websites, develop websites. It actually never occurred to me, where would I get clients? Which sounds kind of ridiculous, but when you have a job, the work just keeps coming at you. And I suddenly, and I was a marketing guy in my company, but I realized that pretty much nothing I knew about marketing in a big company had anything to do with clients as a solo. There's no budget, there's no name recognition, there's no staff. And so I really struggled for a while. What I found though, and it took a while for me to kind of put the pieces together, was that while you have to be good at what you do, it's not really a game of capability when it comes to getting hired because you can't really tell who's capable. So by the way, I only work with professional service providers attorneys, consultants, financial planners, coaches, recruiters. And the thing all of us have in common is we kind of all have the same capabilities. So you may be incrementally better than the next recruiter or consultant. But if you are, I can't actually tell as a potential client. Like you don't know how good medically your own doctor is. And the truth is it doesn't really matter unless you know, you're know you getting a heart transplant or something equally significant. And so what I found was what really matters is do people like you and do they think you're an expert? But even that, which I know we'll talk about, it's not really a function of how expert you are, because again, they can't tell. It's what kind of things do you do that give them confidence that you're good. And so um, I realized it's sort of this, what I would call soft stuff. that really makes a difference in marketing. So again, you have to be good, but everyone's good who's worth worrying about. And um, the difference is going to be, how do you stand out and make a difference? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So, so talk to me about that that whole expert thing, right? I mean, is, don't I just need to go get some certifications and maybe write a book and not, now I'm an expert? Or what what does that mean? Well, so it's actually counterintuitive in some ways. What I find is the more certifications exist or are required in your field, the harder it is to stand out. So that's attorneys, financial planners, certainly anyone in the medical field. The reason is, is because everyone in the fields already passed the bar or is a certified financial planner or is a CPA. So yeah, you need those things, but having them only makes you look like every other professional. In some ways, the less regulated or uh, certified your field is, the easier it is to stand out because people don't have those things. But in any case, they're not differentiators. They're just like the price of admission. And so, it's this soft stuff that matters. Do I like you? Do I remember you? Do, are other people telling me about you? And again, that's not capability-based. It's based on doing other things. Hmm, that makes good sense. So so let's talk a little bit about that. So for, first, what, what are some of the benefits of being more likable? And then we're going to move into some practical tips on how you can actually do that. Yeah. Well, uh, it's nice, which, uh, I mean, all kidding aside, just the part of being more authentic and connecting with people in a, in a nice way 
I found very, and this is a surprise too, very different from the world inside a company. I mean, I didn't work in a company that was by any means cutthroat. It was a, it was a, at least on the surface, a friendly place. But the truth is, a company is shaped like a pyramid. It's smaller at the top. So you are competing with all your peers every step of the way. And I remember thinking when I went off on my own that it was going to be this sort of doggy dog world. And I found the exact opposite. That people are incredibly helpful and friendly, even people who at some level compete with you. Um, so it's just sort of a nicer way to be. But I'd also say from a strict how do I get more clients? The people who get referred, the people who actually hire you are people who like you. I mean, my belief in how good you are and my belief in how much I like you are two totally separate things. So you could hire someone, you know, we've all had, in, interacted with a doctor, let's say specialist who's really good, but no one likes him or her. And that's okay. Um, but my wanting to work with you because your credentials are so similar to other people, is very much a function of, do we connect? Do I like your point of view? Do you treat me well? It's so soft that I have to say, when it first started to be something I was conscious of, I kind of thought, you can't really teach this to people. I mean, like everybody knows this, but we all have dozens of opportunities every day from responding to an email from someone we've never heard of who asks a quick question. It's a lot easier to just delete it. That guy can't help me. You have a friend or someone you used to work with. You know, we've all gotten these emails who just got laid off looking for connections. It's easy to ignore that guy. People publish a newsletter. Do you ever respond to it or do you just hope people are going to respond to your own stuff? So it is sort of the stuff your mother told you. And the funny thing is, it's not that people aren't likable in their personal lives. So I'm not, I don't work with people who like everybody hates this guy, make him nicer. I'm saying, most people are totally fine on personal interactions, but when it comes to business, they lose a lot of that. They lose a lot of their authentic personality. They start writing in these sort of your call is important, you know, please listen closely as our menu options have changed kind of way. And so a lot of what I do with my own clients is helping them just remove the sort of professional mask, if you will, and be more comfortable in their own skin and ultimately it's an easier way to market because you're not like trying to figure out how am I supposed to be? Again, it's counterintuitive because we all have this feeling like, oh, that's unprofessional. You're not supposed to do that. You know, your brother-in-law with the MBA at Thanksgiving is going to say, no, don't do that. I'm telling you though, I have found that it's not, it's not that I'm more likable than the average person, although I am better looking. It's that I am just more comfortable coming across in a business setting that way. And it just, it's like a magic thing because so many people are afraid of doing it. Yeah. Well, I think being comfortable with who you are is really the root of much of my success and much of many people's success. I mean, the, the more, the, the less, I guess, uh, programmatic it sounds in how that I talk to you is going to be the better, the better off that I'm going to be and the more business we're going to do, because if you're comfortable, it's clear that it's not uh you know, that it's not some script that you're reading. Instead, it's just a real conversation that you're having. Yeah, and it's funny. Um, there has been a shift from just, I think people have pretty much acknowledged the sort of straight two-dimensional business professional way is not the way to go. But what I see happening now is, and it's funny, a client of mine whose, work, whose website I'm working on right now, we talked about this yesterday, because um, we were talking about the bios that we're going to write for the say 15 or 20 people in her company. And she said, which I thought was great, I don't want it to be one of these kind of campy bios. And now you see that all the time, meaning everyone's, you know, the coolest person and they're bottling beer on the weekend and hanging out and they're fun. So it's gone from this artificial professionalism to this artificial, we're all cool and wonderful. And I, I'm, again, just trying to get people to communicate in the way they really are. I don't think there's a best way to be. I think what it is, is we've all got clients who love us. How do you act around those people? And again, there's no magic way. It's like some people like their financial planner to be very serious. Other people like that their financial planner has a dog in the office. You may think the guy with the dog isn't serious enough. I may think the other guy is, you know, no fun. So there's no right way to be. It's what I'm always saying to people is 
How do you behave around your best clients, the ones who, like, no matter what you say, they think you're, you're brilliant and they love you? Can you have your marketing, your website, your LinkedIn, your emails sound like that? Easier said than done. But to me, that's the goal, that no matter how I see you or where I interact with you, it's like you're always the same person. Wow. You're always the same person wherever you are. I think that's that's so important. So, Michael, how... How do we do that, though? I mean, that sounds so simple. Yeah. So give us some practical tips. Like step one, like how do we get started being more us? Yeah. So a couple of things. If you're a small company or certainly an individual, and those are the only people I work with, we have a huge advantage. So it's not that the people at Verizon aren't friendly. It's just that there's so many people in the room. And I've had clients. I used to have bigger clients. You know, you'd have 15 people in the room trying to write a newsletter together. By the time the legal department's done with it and the marketing department's done with it and the PR department, it comes across as, you know, please listen closely. <laughs> so we have a huge advantage. There's a lot of things you can learn from big companies, but communication isn't one of them. There's too many people in the room. So first off is don't copy these guys in this way, trying to, again, sound more professional. Second thing is there's a lot of tactics that, I mean, we all have, I don't know, dozens of maybe hundreds of opportunities every day, as I mentioned. So, for example, some things you can do. My favorite thing, send handwritten notes to people. I send I send one handwritten note a week. In fact, Ed's filled it here this week's lucky one. Uh, I, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to thank somebody. It could be someone like you who's invited me on their podcast. It could be like the person who cleaned my teeth. Once a week, one note. I've literally been in clients' offices and seen my notes on the bulletin board. I've had people call me up to thank me. There's nothing great about the notes. It's just that nobody gets them anymore. It's hard, again, not to pick on Verizon, but they're not sending you a handwritten note. So my goal is simple. Once a week, I send it. That's 50 a year. People remember that. Second thing is um, I try and help people who are in no position to help me. So that could be the, you know, we've all gotten the call, hi, I'm Getting into your industry, can I buy you a cup of coffee? Now, there's a guy, that guy can't help me. It's so easy to say I'm too busy. My rule is if you come to my town, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. I don't care who you are. Although, it's just a quick story. I was actually sitting at Starbucks like two days ago with a friend talking about this likability and how you have to help people who can't help you. And literally, a guy walks into Starbucks and says, does anybody have jumper cables? And I have to admit, I, I hesitated. He's looking right at me, and I hesitated. And then I thought, all right. I thought, yeah, I do. So I had to go and jump the guy's car. But I thought, okay, if you're going to say likable expert, you have to live it. But I, I have to say, there's a certain amount of sort of karmic belief in all this. But we all live in a word of mouth world. We're not buying advertising. And so word of mouth is random, but it's not luck. You can turn the volume up. So. People think of word of mouth like finding $10 on the street. And it is that random in that way, but I can't tell you where you're gonna find the $10, but I can have a lot more $10 out there by helping people be nice to people. Again, it's so simple and easy, but if I said, hey, what do you do to stay in touch with the people you already know? Answer is usually nothing. I stay in touch with people I know, and so, I just email them. I say hello. I send them a note. But you know what? Some of those people come back and go, oh, you know what? You should call Phil. He, he, he's talking about someone. He needs someone like you. That's 100% how my business works. So it's easy, but it takes a little bit of effort. And it doesn't happen tomorrow. It's like exercise. Like, you know, you can't lose 30 pounds over the weekend. But if you exercise, you know, regularly, you can lose 30 pounds in six months. Same idea. Okay, so so why don't more people do this? I mean, this doesn't sound hard. It does sound doable. You know, one handwritten note a week, I can do that. One, you know, being present and help maybe jumping somebody's car, I can do that. So why why don't more people do this? Well, a few things, and, and I should say, I mean, if we had more time, it's more than when I work with people, we develop an entire plan based on the relationship. Handwritten notes, proactive emails, even something like a newsletter that are all about being out in front. Um, a few things. It's really hard to measure. So when I had a job, our sort of unspoken philosophy was if you can't put it in a spreadsheet, it doesn't exist. So not only would I not have ever even said the word likability as a 
marketing tool, it never would have even occurred to me. We didn't work that way. It had to be trackable. Second is, as I just said, it's not going to happen tomorrow. People want stuff that happens quickly. I mean, we tend to get very transaction oriented. And so we want to know, should I talk to this Phil guy today? I don't know. Does he seem like someone who might want to hire me? My philosophy is make friends, not connections. I don't know who you know. I don't know. Maybe your wife is CEO of a Fortune 100 company. I'm just out there connecting. The other thing is, because it's so sort of soft and easy feeling, it doesn't seem like real business. So we tend to miss it as, hey, I don't have time for that stuff. And what's nice about it is, and the handwritten notes are a perfect example, I could tell 100 people about it and only five people are going to do it because people are too busy. So this will never be a, a tactic that's you know overrun with people. I'm not concerned that suddenly everyone's sending handwritten notes and you know staying in touch. Nobody doesn't, and I don't think they ever will. So it's almost like a little, it's like a secret weapon because again, all the people you're competing with are just as good, just as capable, just as experienced. And so tweaking your website language to add one more word that's gonna make you sound slightly better I think you very quickly hit the point of diminishing returns, which is making real connections with people who send other people your way. That's really valuable stuff. People remember you for a long time. Like that guy who's you know out of work, when I get one of those emails, I email the guy back. It's always somebody you know. And say, oh, you know, let me know if I can help you, what's going on. You better believe that guy who's still in a state of shock from getting laid off, that guy remembers me. And it, it does come back your way. Yeah, it totally comes back your way. So, so give me just a, as we, you know, kind of wrap things up here, Michael, give me some uh, ways that this has kind of come back to you and some of the results you've seen, even with your clients that are kind of unexpected, maybe. Yeah, I'll give me two. one with me, one with the client. So um, one of the things I do with, with clients is I say, again, these are people generally are professional, really good at what they do, but don't know anything about market. I start them up by saying, look, for the net today, between today and the next 20 days, I want you to send one handwritten note a day to anyone. Can't be the same person. Thank them. Say hi. No, I haven't spoken in a while. An easy thing. That's it. You don't need special stationery. Just send a note. Nobody wants to do this, but I tell them just do this. One of my clients, 20 days later, spoke again. Said I got two new clients from that. She un earth relationships from people she used to know or work with that were just dormant and they just called her and it wasn't that the note you know was a sales pitch at all but she happened to hit that i mean this is unusual but she happened to hit them at the right time they remembered her and all that uh second thing got time for like a four minute story absolutely hit me all right so this is a true story so again i used to work for the cable company sorry and it was the last job i had i was there for 12 years and the last job I had at the company was I was the director of marketing for the New England region for the what was then the high speed Internet product. And my counterpart was this guy named Doug. He was in charge of customer service. Doug and I didn't hate each other, but we didn't go to lunch either because we were sort of pulling in different directions. Like I was the guy in charge of making, the, you know, getting more customers. His job was answering the phone. So we were always on the opposite side of any kind of tactical discussions about like resources and how fast we should go. So I leave the company, go out to start my own. And um, I wrote a newsletter back then every two weeks. In fact, I still do. And I wrote one about the fact that one day I went to my office and my internet service was out. And it was out for two days. And my internet was served by that same cable company. Now in 2001, if your internet was out, you were out. There was no You're done. Phone. There was no like free public Wi-Fi at Starbucks. You were done. And so it finally came back on. I wrote a newsletter. I wasn't bashing the cable company in particular, but I was just saying it was so great to be back on. Well, a lot of people I used to work with were on that list, Doug among them. And he wrote me an email that said, hey, I got to listen to this stuff all day long. If that's what your newsletter is going to be about, take me off the list. Well, I didn't need Doug anymore. So I wrote him an email, this is before I was like, well, that said, hey, do your job, stop complaining, don't worry, you're off the list, you know, that kind of thing. But I did not send it. For some unknown reason, I went to lunch. And I don't know, 
maybe it was a great day or I had something for lunch. I come back an hour later and I just had a different perspective and I deleted that. And I just wrote to him an email today. Hey, sorry, things are so tough. You know, I hope they get better. See you. And he re-emailed re me back and said, hey, thanks. But a couple of years later, that company is looking for someone to do an email newsletter for them. And I hear about it, throw my hat in the ring. And I'm competing against like real life-size agencies. And somehow they hire me. That client grew to, in a couple of years, I was doing a dozen newsletters a month for the same company. I mean, over five years, they paid me over a million dollars. They were huge projects. One day I'm having lunch with someone I used to work with saying, oh, yeah, this is a great, you know, project and blah, blah, blah. And I can't believe they hired me. And she's like, oh, don't you know? And I was like, no, what? That was Doug. Doug, apparently, went to the hiring manager and said, you need to hire Michael. I mean, I like shuddered to think I was literally hand on the mouse to send that email. If I had sent the first one, if I hadn't sent the second one, nothing. So that's an extreme example. There's a lot of money. And you don't usually have any insight into what's going on behind the curtain when you do something nice. But to me, that's always been the example of me. Of, look at how that one thing had huge results. And so I just look at it as it's like throwing seeds. You know, when you plant grass seed, you don't know which one leads to grass. You just know if you throw it out and you water it, you get grass. I find the same thing. It's a soft thing. It's hard to track. You know, again, people will tell you, yeah, you're wasting your time. But I find it a very nice way to generate business. You can still do all the cold calling or whatever you're doing as well. It's just that there's this other layer you can do that makes a huge difference. Awesome. That's so great. Well, Carolyn says that's a great story. You used empathy with him. So is empathy one of the secret weapons to being a more likable expert, Michael? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Again, it's it's all the stuff you you know you're supposed to do. And again, I think most of us do it in real life. I, I never would have sent an email like that to a person in my personal life. It was only because I had my business hat on that I considered sending that email to Doug. And that's the thing. It's really just, can you apply the same rules of life that you you, you already do? You're all, you know, everybody's likable, more or less. It's just that... I'm, I'm, I'm more um, conscious of it because I know it helps me. I know the guy whose car I jumped is probably going to hire me. <laughs> awesome. I don't even know who he is, but yeah, you never know. Yeah. What well, doesn't? Yeah, and it doesn't matter. So that's really cool. So, so Michael, if people want to learn how to be more likable, you definitely are the likable expert. You know, this is Michael's book. It's fantastic. It's a quick read. 121 insights to start your day and grow your business. Really, really simple stuff, right? It's stuff that anybody can do. So where where should we send them? How do they get in touch with you? How do they get more of Michael Katz? Well, I set up a special page for your listeners. It's michaelkatz.com slash Phil. And you can download part of the book. You can get you can get my list of uh, business books that I recommend for your own business and some other stuff. And you can do it all right there. Awesome. Awesome. So that, again, the URL, if you're listening, is michaelkatz.com slash Phil. Really simple. Michael, again, his book is The Likable Expert. He's definitely likable, definitely a nice guy. We spent some time this morning actually talking before this, and I decided I got to bring this guy on camera. We got to talk about this. So, Michael, thank you so much for your time. You are a gift, my friend. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right, buddy. See you soon. All right.